Today we are going to explore ASP.NET Core's powerful policy-based authorization framework with multiple requirements per policy and also multiple handlers per requirement. We will start with a simple weather API application that needs to protect its endpoint, then gradually build up to more advanced scenarios. By the end, you will see how to create flexible and maintainable authorization policies that you can use in your real-world applications. I am using the Amazon Cognito as the identity server. However, this works just perfect if you're using any other identity server in your application. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my ASP.NET Core series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring it. Without much delay, let's jump right into the policy framework of ASP.NET Core and explore how to build complex real-world policies. Here we have the ASP.NET API application that we have been using in our Amazon Cognito series. Here, I have added a new policy which is scan access detailed weather data which starts off with a simple requirement that says a subscription tier requirement. Now, in this case, if we scroll down, you can see there is a paid subscription handler that's already registered in here. All this does is check in the claims if it has a subscription attribute and that attribute's value is equal to premium. So, the user must be a premium user to be able to access this endpoint. Now, we have applied this policy to one of our new endpoints, which is weather forecast detail, which gives you detailed weather forecast information. So, you can see here the policy is being applied as the attribute using the authorize and the policy attribute on it. Now, let's run this application. I have created this endpoint in the .http file, which we will be using to invoke this endpoint. Now, in here, I have already created multiple users, which we will be using as we progress along in this video. Now, for the simple use case, we have the John Premium user, which is associated to the current token value. So, you can see that's getting passed as part of the authorization bearer header. So, let's invoke the detailed endpoint. Now, this is going to hit our breakpoint. And in this case, we have a subscription claim coming in through our token and the value is premium, which means this will succeed and John will get access to the API endpoint. So, if we look at the console, you can see the detailed information is coming back and John is able to access this API endpoint. Now, in Cognito, for this claims to work, I have already set up a Lambda function to inject in some of these claims into the access token. We cover this in a separate video, which will be linked here if you're interested to know more about how to set that up in Cognito. Now, let's say the business comes along and say that we have a new requirement and that is to support educational and research assistance. Now, this means even though if they're not a premium user, they need to have access to this API endpoint for educational and research purposes. Now, we could come and start modifying this paid subscription handler, of course, rename it to a more appropriate handler and add additional logic inside here. So, you would be having additional if loops inside this handler. Now, this is not a great way to extend your handlers. Instead of that, it's much better to create a completely separate handler for that specific requirement. Now, in this case, the subscription tier requirement is still the requirement that we are trying to satisfy, but we need to create a new handler. So, why would I want multiple handlers for a requirement? This is typically in the case when you want your evaluation to be on an OR basis. That is, you need to check on something or some other condition. Now, in our case, we have to check either it is a premium user or if the user is belonging to an educational or research department. Now, this makes it a perfect use case to use multiple handlers. So, let's switch back to our application code. And in here, I have already created the educational institutional handler, which says that this is the allowed departments, in this case, education and research. And like before, from the user, I'm getting the Cognito groups from the claims. Now, we already have set up users with groups. So, if I navigate to my Cognito and go to my users, you can see we have research user, Paru, so, let's navigate into that and we have the department being set up here as Amazon Group Memberships. Now, this research user belongs to the research group, which means their token will have the Cognito groups and have the value of research. 
So here, in this case, when we get the cognitive groups, the department claim will have a value that belongs to either education or research. Let's make sure we add the new handler into our dependency injection container. So let's duplicate this line and let's add in the educational institution handler. Let's also navigate into that and put a breakpoint, which already is there and run this application. Now, let's use the research user to invoke this specific condition. So, let's switch over to the HTTP file. Let's first try with the John Premium user itself. So, let's hit the detailed endpoint. Now, in this case, it gets a subscription claim and this is the premium checking claim. So, this checks that the subscription claim has a premium subscription and it succeeds that requirement. It also hits the department claim handler in this specific case. However, in this specific condition, since John is not part of either of these two research departments, it simply ignores this handler and says it has completed. The only thing is that it hasn't called succeed on this requirement. However, the premium subscription handler has already called a succeed, which means this requirement in total is a success because it's doing an OR check between these two handlers. So in this case, we get back the result and you can see the user is able to get the information. So now if I switch back to the HTTP file, let's switch this over to our Paru research user. Let's make sure this token is of hers and let's save this and run this again. So let's hit the detail endpoint once more. Now in this case, it's hitting the subscription claim. However, the research user is of basic subscription. So by default, this handler is not going to call succeed on this specific requirement. However, when it hits the education requirement handler, it's getting the department claim. And in this case, she belongs to the research department, which means this handler is going to call succeed on the requirement and she gets access to the data as well. So here we have seen the simple scenario where you can add multiple handlers for the exact same requirement and have one of them pass the requirement. This is a powerful way of building up your requirements and handlers and making more complex policies. Now, this is all great. And now we have a user, Mike, who has come along and started abusing our API endpoint. Now, because of which, we have added Mike into a suspended user group. So if I navigate back to users in, in the Cognito, we can see there is Mike suspended and Mike is currently belonging to a suspended user group. Now, you could have various conditions based on your business rules and conditions and how you have set up things. I'm just showing some mechanisms on how this can work. Now, we need to make sure that any of the users in the suspended list should not have access to this endpoint. Now, there might be a premium user, there might be a research user, etc. However, if they are in the suspended list, it means they've done something bad and we've blocked them temporarily. So, how do we handle this? Now, let's come along and let's add a new handler for this. In this case, this is going to be the suspended user handler. In this case, what we are doing is checking if the user is in role suspended, which means it uses the groups to check if that is the role that's assigned. And in this particular case, instead of calling succeed, we are calling context.fail which means the user will not get access to that requirement and it will fail that requirement. So let's come back to our program.cs and let's add in the handler. So let's duplicate this line and let's call in the suspended user handler. Let's run this again and let's invoke the HTTP file. So let's switch the token to use the suspended user, which is Mike suspended user. Let's save this and let's hit the endpoint again. Now, in this case, this is going to hit the subscription claim check for the subscription tier. Now, we have Mike as a premium user, which means it will call succeed on the requirement. So, this is a success, but it again hits the Cognito groups and it checks and it sees that Mike is not part of education or research. So, it doesn't call success in this specific case, but now it hits our subscription tier requirement handler for suspended user handler and it checks the user's role and it sees that this is part of the suspended group and it calls context.fail. Now, because this is called context.fail, even if any of the other requirements has called success, this will fail the request altogether. So, you can see Mike is now getting a 403 forbidden. Until and unless Mike gets removed from the suspended user group, Mike will always be getting a 403 forbidden.
So up until now, we've seen the scenario where the same requirement has been having multiple handlers. So we added the paid subscription handler, the education institution handler, and also the suspended user handler for this single requirement, which is the subscription tier requirement. Now your policy can also have more than one requirement. So let's say our business comes along and says we need to put some region checks and make sure that the users are from specific region or locale. So in this specific case, let's add a new requirement, which is going to be geographic access requirement. So we're just adding in the next requirement that we need to check along in our policy. So this policy now needs to pass two of the requirements to get a success response. Now the geographic access requirement in this specific case has the authorization handler also as part of the requirement. Now this is another way you can register it. However, if you want multiple handlers, you will have to split this out. Now in this specific case, all this is checking is getting the locale from its claims and checking if it belongs to any of these values. So it checks if it's in EN-AU, INGB or US. If it's not, it will not succeed this specific requirement. So let's run this and let's see this in action. So let's use one of our valid existing users. So let's switch back to Paru research user and let's hit this endpoint detailed. Now in this case, it's going to hit the geographic access requirement. It's going to get the locale claim. And in this case, it belongs to ENAU, which means it calls succeed on this requirement and continues on. Now it starts looking at the next requirement and it sees the premium and it's not a premium. However, Paro belongs to our allowed departments based on our research claim and it gives success on that. She also does not belong to the suspended role, which means that is not being failed. Now, both of these requirements passed for her because of which we are able to get back the response. Now, let's switch back to an HTTP and let's choose another user, which is Alex restricted user. So that's restricted by the geographic region. And let's switch this token to Alex. Now, in this case, if you're going to hit the detailed endpoint again, you can see it's getting the locale. However, the locale is en-xx, which means this does not call the succeed and it completes the task. However, Alex is still a premium user and that requirements does get succeeded. Alex is not part of any of the specified departments, so that is not getting succeeded and also not a suspended user, which means that is also not succeeded. Now, since in this case, the geographic requirement failed, Alex is getting a 403 forbidden. So now in this scenario, we have two requirements that needs to be met for any of the user to be successfully given access to this endpoint. So we've seen how to mix and match multiple handlers and also multiple requirements into a policy and get this work for your application scenarios. Now you can call the context to succeed and also in cases where you want to explicitly deny the user, you can call the context.fail. Now, in a future video, I'll show you how to use the staff or admin override policy that will allow any of the staff or admin user to access all the endpoints. This is a very common scenario when building applications. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.